I'm Delta Work, and this is Very Delta. Today on the show, I'm joined by the one and only Meatball, where we find out what is fat, what is slut, and why it's the perfect combination. Plus, a little foot-long taste test and some shouting on the couch. But first, do you want to see me go off? Because I think you want to see me go off. Go off, Delta! M. Oh. M. Mom! Are you a lady like me? Introspective, beautiful. Oh, are you intellectual like me? Beguiled by a bargain? You like wild times? Oh, like me? Are you serving the community like me? Well, if you are, then you must be very Delta. I'm Delta Work, and this is Very Delta, a luxury public access podcast and YouTube talk show where I look gorgeous, speak extemporaneously, and invite fascinating people to sit on the couch and get Very Delta. Very Delta is for the woman who shows up at Costco at 8.30 in the morning to get a good parking spot, even though they don't open until 10, just to avoid the hassle. And now, let's get into some things that are Very Delta. You know I love to run errands. That's what I do. I wake up at the dawn of 2 o'clock in the afternoon and get myself together. I go out, I grab an iced coffee or a Diet Coke, and I'm going to run errands that usually somewhere throughout the week are going to include Target, maybe uh, the bank, maybe the grocery store, maybe to pay a bill somewhere. And I do not understand why in this day and age... When everyone's worried about HIPAA laws and uh, guarding your information, like when you put your debit card in it at the at the uh, pump, they say like cover your debit card so nobody can see it, and you have to pull on the machine to make sure it's not a fake one, like this is real. Make sure you print out your receipt, all of that. Why is it when I go to Target or the DMV, someplace that needs vital information, they have no problem going, "What's your home phone number?" So that everyone has to hear. And I'm like, 867-5309. And they're like, Jenny, is that you? And I'm like, yes, I'm Jenny. That's my number. Regardless of what your number is or what your name is, why do they ask that information so that everyone can hear? I'm so confused. And then if you're like at Target and you've given them that number and then they're like, okay, so you have prescription strength Dimatap or whatever it is that you have for your prescription, you have to go over to the window and they're like, okay, when you take this, make sure that you only eat food. Like, so they don't want anyone to know that you have a severe cold, right? They don't want anyone to know that you have like, you need cream for a lesion or whatever. Well, everyone fucking knows where I live now because all they have to do is go look up that number and trace it to this and trace it to that. What's your address? What's the last four numbers of your social security number? Well, babe, uh, they can look at me and see how old I am, see whereabouts I live. And they're like, oh, well, I pretty much can guess what the first three are of your social security number based on the uh, fucking inoculation on your arm, how old you are. We can figure all this shit out, right? People can just put your address in and look at pictures of your home, your backyard, every little bit of it. But so why are we still like allowed to let people ask us that question. Shouldn't there be like on the pad, you know how when they say like, check here if you're a member or enter your number for, at, uh, for your benefits or whatever. Well, can't you just say, uh, excuse me, can you double check that that is the current phone number we have for you? Or can you just enter your number because we don't know your number. We have no idea who you are. You're off from somewhere else. We've never seen you before. Just enter your number. Why are we screaming it? And at the DMV, I mean, you know when you go to the DMV what you're dealing with. It's one thing at the pharmacy, but the DMV is like a cattle call for everyone and everything. There are people there with an appointment because they're trying to get through it. Oh, that appointment does not really help. I mean, come on. Let's be serious. Um, helps a little bit, but not the most. But when you're going in there and you're just like, oh, I needed to renew whatever. Count on three hours. We already know that. 
no secret. It's never going to get better. And the people that work at the DMV are really look at you like you are the grossest person on the planet because you came in there to do, I don't know, your tags, which I don't even do that anymore. You have to get triple A and have them do it. And if you don't have triple A, just pay the $27 to go to one of those like Rosa's notary and tags or whatever. Just go pay them the money. It is far better than standing in line. You don't have to worry about phone numbers and people screaming because you're basically in a converted house that like the living room is the notary, the Avon salesperson, the tags and like passport photos. But don't get your, well, actually you should get your passport photos at a place like that. I got my passport photos done at the post office one time. And the post office is the one that fucked up my passport because it ended up coming back and they didn't like approve the passport. This is years ago, of course. They didn't approve it because they were saying like there was something wrong with the photos. I thought you were supposed to go to the post office. I thought that was like the most trusted place. Apparently not. I ended up going to a smaller like place, did it myself. Everything was fine. But I still don't understand this screaming or or like your address. Is this still your current address? So they know my phone number, my address, the bank does it. I will say the bank is a little more like if you, uh, I've seen people or, or even, I shouldn't say I've seen people. I use online banking, but I remember like when I was a teenager, I would, um, you know, try to get my balance up somewhere. And so I would ask like, what's my, what's my current balance? Cause I had like the little book and everything and they would write it down on a piece of paper. And I thought, Oh, that's so elegant. Or they don't want everyone to know that your current balance is $97, but you know, at 16 years old, that's great. Um, actually at any age in this day and age, $97 is fucking great because I mean, listen, Money never did grow on trees, but now it's like definitely, it's not rooted anywhere. There is no money. There is no money. Everything's expensive. People are screaming my fucking phone number so everybody knows where I fucking live and how to get a hold of me. And that's interesting because I think maybe I'm thinking loftier about it and like that people want to call me. I'm not really getting any calls. Although I am getting a lot of, uh, like weird calls from like people selling stuff. And they say, if you get a lot of those, your information has been leaked, but really what are they going to do with my information? <laughs> Honestly, but it is just something I think about. Right. I mean, it's kind of Karen. -y. you know, I verge um, and diverge. Oh my God. And credit, credit or debit, credit or debit. Wh why? Like, what does it matter? Does one come out quicker than the other? I'm guessing that's what it is. I'm guessing if you click credit, it's not going to hit your account until the close of day or something. And then debit is if you could. No, that's if you hit credit. It comes out at the close of day. And then if you hit debit, maybe it's immediate because that's considered cash in a way. I don't know. I'm sure I could just Google this, but I'm sure that will take me down a rabbit hole too. And then from there, it's like credit or debit. And then I figure out like, something else. And then suddenly I've solved like the Jean Benet case. Like that's where all of this goes for me. You know, it's that long ride. And then I end up back to back to my starting point, which is stop asking for my fucking phone number in front of everyone. Okay. Just have it on the pad. And then what is the thing about like you walk up and it says tap insert or swipe. And so I'm like, oh, okay. And like, here's the machine, right? And it says, and they, it says tap, swipe, uh, insert. So I'm like, why well, modern? So I like go like that and it doesn't do it. So then I'm like, oh, maybe it's up here. And so then I'm up here and then I'm like this. And then I'm down here where the symbol is. And then the person's like, oh, that one doesn't work. You're supposed to insert it. <laughs> Well, you've watched me do this for 35 minutes while you're bringing up my things, but okay. So then you go to insert it and they're like, oh, you know what? Actually try swiping it. Oh, for God's sake. How about I just give you cash? How about you just say to me, that machine doesn't work because our company's fucked and just, we want cash, right? I was at Dollar Tree the other day and I did all that. And finally it says like, do you want cash back? And the girl, the girl says, um, oh, by the way, there's no cash back. And I didn't want any cash back, but it did seem like, if I was going up with a few items, what if I was there for cash back and I was just buying something like, you know, when you go to a place and you think like, 
oh, I really need to use their restroom, but let me go buy a water so they know that I'm a customer, so I'm not embarrassed. Like, and I'm just like, oh, well, just while I'm here, um, hey, could I use your restroom? I'm, I figure I might as well. I'm here, you know, like that way so that you're not like my intention was just to use the restroom. I feel like I have to create a storyline so they don't think I'm like abusing the privilege. Anyway, why could they not just say like, um, if you're making a transaction, we're not doing any cash back today. Like if you're, if you were looking for that and I could say, oh no, I'm good. But instead, like I've already purchased something. What if I didn't really want those things? What if I just wanted cash back, but I like could have just bought one thing. I mean, it's Dollar Tree. You're going to buy a handful of things, but this tap. No, go ahead and slide it. No, go ahead and insert it. Oh, for fuck's sake. Why can't, why can't it just say like, we're only swiping today. We're only swiping today. I know it has options, but we're only swiping. And so that way, you know, and you don't look crazy. But then when you see people take out the plastic bag and they put it over the card and then they're like, I feel like you're stealing my money. <laughs> I, that's, I just feel like that transaction is just keeps going through, you know, it's like when you're online and, and it says like, do not uh, backspace or whatever, or else this transaction will go through twice. I have so much anxiety when it comes to that. I'm so scared that they're going to be like, well, I guess you bought three months to Ladies Home Journal, even though you only wanted one month so you could read a fucking article. Remember when you could just get a newspaper like secondhand from someone and you could just like read an article and now you're like, click on something on your iPhone and you're like, oh, I'm going to read this article. And it's like, want to continue? Well, you're going to have to buy uh, a, a year's subscription to this. Why? I, I, I want to know. I want to know about Taylor Swift's hair. Like I, that's, I just want to read the article about that. I'm not going to. And why is the wall street journal writing articles about Taylor Swift's hair? Come on. Isn't that supposed to be the business magazine or something? Jesus Christ. Credit or debit. Credit or debit. Why are we asking that still? Just you decide, you decide for me, whether it's credit or debit, I'm not going to know any different. I'm really not. But you will know and it'll make it easier for you. Credit or debit. And the stores with the 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 coupon code, like the the thing that you put on your keys or you enter your phone number and they're like, do you want points? That is such a scam at Ralph's. I'm telling you, I was there the other day and it was a total scam. It was $3.99 for 12 packs. And that was what came up on the thing. And it said, the store deal is that it's $3.99 if you have the card. But then you go up and do it and it says, do you have the e-coupon as well? Because you have to have the coupon. But I read the sign as, it said, use your card or electronic coupon. And I was thinking this was a Super Bowl deal. So we got five 12 packs, right? That's gonna last at least till tomorrow. And then they had a special on the bottles, the six pack of bottles. They were, uh, Six ninety nine, I think it was six ninety nine or five forty nine. I can't remember what it was, but if you buy four of them, it was just fifteen dollars. So we got those. Well, then we go to the self checkout and it rings up the one item. It gives just a coupon on the bottles, but no coupon on the twelve packs. And then I realized while reading the flyer that it says that you can only use that coupon five times per transaction and we had six containers. So it didn't take it off on any of them. They decided that that coupon applied to the six, the four containers of the bottles. But here's the thing, the bottles were just a store sale. It had, it wasn't a coupon and it wasn't the, uh, have the card. So I'm supposed to read the flyer and compare that to the app and then compare that to what the in-store signage says and then just come up with a common denominator and decide, oh, well, I'm going to get what I'm going to get and then fuck off. No. So no Tino shade. I had to leave everything in the grocery cart there. I know that sounds fucked up because somebody had to put that away, but guess what? That's what sucks about working at Ralph's, I guess. I don't know what to tell you. I'm the one who left the lemon, the onion, the fucking cilantro and all the sodas. So if you saw that, that was me. I don't know what to tell you. I don't feel bad, not one tiny bit at all. You should feel bad. You should feel bad. It's not my job to cross-reference fucking everything to figure out at what point you're going to do what. 
It said, store coupon for anybody. That's just the deal right now. This one said, you have to have either the card or the electronic coupon. Well, we had the card, not the electronic coupon. So then we look up on the app and we find the electronic coupon that's in the app, but there's no bar to scan it. So we asked somebody, hey, can you help? And he's like, oh, shit, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know what to tell you it means that I don't really blame that person. I kind of blame the training. Actually, I where's my thing that says CEO? I'd like to speak from the CEO of Deltaco to the CEO of Ralph's. You should not make your customers have to cross-reference three different, the in-store, the app, and the flyer that comes to the house to decide which one which one like supersedes the other one and then try to figure that out and then realize that I'm going to have to leave the groceries there. That's your fault, not mine. Do you want to see me take a break? So I think you want to see me take a break. Do you have expensive taste when it comes to perfume like me? Do you end up with a shelf full of half-used bottles like me? Well, with Scentbird, you can have great taste and switch up your fragrance routine without breaking the bank. I am someone who will blindly buy fragrance because I love the bottle or because somebody told me it was really great. And then I end up with fragrance that I just give away. With Scentbird, it's totally the opposite. You can narrow down your selections without doing any crazy research. You can just say, I'm this type of personality. I'm flirty. I'm sexy. I'm elegant. Maybe you want to go according to season or occasion. Something you want to wear to work, something you want to wear on a date, or maybe you know exactly that you like a sweet fragrance, a fresh fragrance, whatever it is, you can go in, narrow it all down, and they will supply to you a selection of fragrances that you can go from for there. I narrowed down a few fragrances. This one's called Get a Room and order champagne. It's got raspberry, mandarin on the top, jasmine, patchouli, and vanilla in the base. I mean, this is right up my alley. I also got mind games, which is black licorice, pink peppercorn, Egyptian jasmine, white gardenia, cocoa bean. These fragrances are layered, they're leveled, and with Scentbird, you can have anything that you want right at your fingertips. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service that gives you the opportunity to shop from over 700 brands, choose a new designer fragrance to try every month, and then it's shipped right to your door for just $17. It's available in the US and Canada. Scentbird has perfumes and colognes and a lot of unisex options, and you receive a 30-day supply with each shipment. Plus, the Scentbird subscription is flexible, so you can skip any month or pause without penalties. And with an exclusive offer just for our listeners, you can get 55% off of your first month today. That's only $8 for your very first fragrance. Go to Scentbird.com and use my code VERYDELTA for 55% off your first month. Again, that's S C E N T. B I R D dot com for you to try your first perfume or cologne for only eight dollars. Again, that's S C E N T bird dot com for you to try your first perfume or cologne for just eight dollars. Sign on and smell amazing. I bought these glasses at Dollar Tree the other day. What do you think of that? Just something simple. Oh my God. Oh my God. Hello. What in the world? What? How, where does this come from? My brain. Well, I felt like since I made the curtain, I should be the be the set you know oh the little blue carpet oh my god even the cards yeah this one says even the are plant you a bitch that's very delta and the plant oh yeah this is i made this plant this morning i was like oh yeah she's always got something on the desk you are ridiculous <laughs> my guest today is the drag terror of los angeles with a heart of gold she's a podcaster the creator and star of the hit party fat slut and she sewed my curtains for me it's the one and only meatball Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. You know Wicked? I don't. 
I'm going to take you. When it comes to L.A., we should go watch Wicked together. And I we would. we could do a recap on it because I feel like you would really love the first act. Do they sing everything or do they, like, talk and then go into songs? They talk and then go into okay, songs. Okay, see, I can get into that. I have a hard time with, like, everything being, like, song and connected with song. I've never seen anything like that. Isn't oh, I guess the, operas are like that, like, aren't they? Like Evita. Wasn't Evita kind of never that Never seen it. Oh, see. Madonna's in that movie, right? Right. She's an Italian woman. Yeah, uh, uh, she's in. Yeah, she's in it, and she's an Italian woman. What's Evita? The character is Eva Peron. The, why is it called Evita? Well, because why is it called she's Ava? like l- little little Eva. It's like Evita, ah. like like a taco and a taquito. But a taquito is round, cylindrical. So why would it? Why well, I don't know. Why isn't it? Why is it? Why do you ask the hard questions I don't know. already? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's is this early. why you've been podcasting for 500 <laughs> years? Because you know how to really ask the hard questions. I like to fry the big fish. You do. You do. <laughs> you fry all the fish. Um, meatball. Mm-hmm. Is there a last name or was there ever? It was Queen for a while. Uh-huh. Meatball Queen. Uh, but I just just meatball, right? Right. It's nice. The thing is, my Instagram handle is spiciest meatball, and so when I first started drag, everyone would just call me spicy. Mm. They'd be like, "Welcome to the stage, spicy," and I'd be like, "No, it's just meatball," and they're like, "But your account is spiciest." Like Raja Gemini, when which is just just Raja. I heard that story was just because Raya needed to put a last uh-huh. name on Facebook. That's so funny. Yeah, and that's also like Jules Long Beach girl. Like, that's not really her name. Oh, wait. That one, I've never actually made that connection. That's it's not just her where name. she's from. It's just Oh, I always call her Jules Longby. But I always, she now does it too. But I'm like, that's not your name. I've known you since we were babies. Like, oh, that's so funny. She's just Jules. Oh, what about Just Jules? That could just be like, Jules. Just Jack. Just Jules. Just Judy. Just There's Judy. a drag queen named Judy, and her Instagram is Judy, just Judy. Judy, Judy, Bo Booty. Banana Fan of Fofoodie. Um, I would say that you needed to explain that you sewed these curtains, but I think, I mean, based on what you're wearing, which I am in love with. Thank you so much. It was just hot glue in a dream, really. It's everything. Thank you. It's everything. It's choking me. I didn't quite, Mm -hmm. I should have attached it to my shoulder somehow. But I just, you know, I love this set. I know you got a new set. One of your producers sent me a picture of the set, and I said, could you just wear something that matches this? Uh And so I decided to wear the set. Right. Like, why coordinate when you could match? When I could just be her. Right. I love it. I don't know what I'm going to do with this little sofa later, but... Well, I think you're going to just wear the outfit, because I know... Maybe hang it up like a curtain around here. Well, I talked to Dipper um, not too long ago, and I was talking about what a madhouse my um, storage unit is and how it's just (laughs) disgusting. It makes no sense. I have so many clothes in there that I never wear or I've worn one time, and I'm like, I just bought that to wear one time. Mm -hmm. And Dipper was like, you know, Meatball is really good about managing her stuff because what she'll do is make, obviously you make everything. Yes, I do. And they're gorgeous. And you'll make them and you'll rotate them for a minute, and then you're like, I'm good on that. And yeah. then you'll have new things. And then and, I sell them. And I wish I had the wherewithal to do that because I think it would keep me more focused to not have so much shit lingering. I think that bogs me down. No, I'm jealous of your storage unit because because you can go 300 episodes or whatever and only wear w- the same wig once. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you have a large collection. And oftentimes I'll go, oh, where's that one costume? It would be perfect for this theme night. And, and you then sold it. it's gone. It's <laughs> sold. sold it. And some girl, I get there and some girl's wearing it at that right. night. And I was like, Ugh, I regret that. But also some of it is just like, what am I going to do with a fucking bodysuit? You right. know, right. I can make that in a day. Get well, and the magic is that you do, it does live on with someone else. So I think it's kind of cool to see yeah, that. Yeah, it goes on to some ugly person. And they wear that. Ugly costume on their ugly body. What is fat? What is fat? I think it's when <laughs> your body <laughs> stores calories. I don't know. I don't know. I just started working out. And frankly, I don't get it. I don't like it. I don't understand people that work out all the time and are sore all the time. Right. How do you live life like this? What is slut? Slut is when you wake up in the morning and it burns when you pee. <laughs> Oh, That's has slut. that ever happened to you? Happened this morning. We're going to see what happens. I was on the phone in the dressing room trying to get some pills. Yeah, that's what uh, Big Dipper said. Whenever he gets gonorrhea, he uh, will just go online. Yeah, and he'll clickety just, clap. Yeah. I didn't even know it was that easy. They, they were like, what are you going to do? And I was like, I guess go to a clinic after Clickety this. clap. <laughs> Clickety clap. Pots and pans. Yeah, it's just You like just that. bang them together and you get pills at your door. It's fine. It's, it's totally fine. fine. I think it's easy. Um, so what is fat slut, though? Fat slut is a vibe. It's an event. 
It's um, my favorite party that I throw. It's the only one that I throw. I don't know. I was just thinking about it the other day. I get so many compliments on the party, not to toot my own horn, but because um, someone said, I hate when gay people gather together, so I hate going out to gay bars. But something about my party, they were like, yours is the only one that it's bearable at because it's not just gay people. It's uh, it's a collection of everybody. My straight neighbors started coming all the time, mm -hmm. and they said, can I say faggot? And I said, only around me. <laughs> um, there, I don't know. I just like the, the vibe of the party. Yeah. It feels very inclusive and it's not just for fat people. When I started it, I wanted it to be a bear party. Okay. For just fat bears. Um, but then I realized I was like, that's so niche. There's like a whole world of people that don't feel super accepted at, in WeHo or like, because that vibe is such a, its own thing. And I was like, I want a space where everyone can just like dress up and feel stupid. Yeah. And I feel like that's the party. Well, I will say uh, the times that I have been to the club, what I love about what you do is that you just know that I'm insane anyway. So you really do hold the space for people's personalities mm -hmm. and individual proclivities. So you have said to me when I come, if you want to come and fucking leave immediately, I will make it so. If you want to stay and you want to get entirely drunk and lose your mind, I will make it so. Mm -hmm. And I know that and I feel that. So, like, I remember the first time I went to the second time I went, the second time I was like, oh, I'm definitely going to stay. And then it was one of those things where it's like, no, you're getting up to record tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, okay, well, maybe I will, maybe I won't. But I always feel like, just as you said, it is a place where anybody in any personality can go yeah. and feel like they can be on the edge of the party, they can be in the middle of the party, they can be in the eating contest, they could not, they could, you know what I mean? Like, Yeah, and that's the great thing about it too, is that there's like the two drag shows that always start on time, 10.30 and 11.30, and then there's the sexy food eating competition that starts at 12.30, so there's, it, some people only come for the second act of the mm -hmm. drag show and then they leave, right. or some people only come for the eating competition, or only come for the drag show at the beginning and it's like they know what time it's going to be they know what they're getting into and the way precinct is set up is there's tvs all around the bar and we project it outside on the patio so if you want to just go outside and not be surrounded by bodies and still see the show right. you can go out there and smoke and enjoy it and have a nice time and also i like to build this show where it's like um there's a comedy girl there's uh someone who's going to do death drops and kicks and uh -huh. splits and then there's someone who's going to do a sad slow song there's going to be gothy numbers there's going to be con like it's just a a group of everything so everyone gets fed a little bit right right and where did the sexy eating contest like come into it where did that how did that develop you know i don't know i knew that i needed something the party needed something different Mm -hmm. Every party here, every drag show is just like, you see the drag show and you sit around the bar and drink. And I was like, I need a way for the people to be fucking gross. And like, what I love is laughing and at people and like having fun with people. So I was like, oh, I could just like make a bunch of gross foods and make people strip and fuck the food. And then I think people thought that I might have like a weird food fetish. Which is but, fine, which I Which is totally fine. No, I don't have a food fetish. I, weirdly, I thought I would have discovered that if it was mm -hmm. that. But no, I have a foot fetish. I like getting my little piggy sucked on, you know what oh, I mean? Oh, really? But that's uh, beside the point. We'll get to that. I just wanted something wild and crazy. And Precinct normally doesn't let people make a mess at all. Mm -hmm. um, but for this party, it just slowly started getting messier and messier to the point now where they have a special cleaning crew that comes after my party. Because they're like tired of finding shrimp tails and mashed potatoes right. everywhere. My favorite thing that I like to do mm -hmm. is I get to make the jello molds because I like, you know, oh. I like to make things. Right. So I was super inspired by like aspics from like the early 60s, 70s, uh -huh. where people would just put like shrimp and salad inside of the mold of a jello. Mm -hmm. And then I got really good at it because I was like starting to layer them and then uh -huh. mix colors. And then I figured out that you could like, you could put uh, mashed potatoes in it, you could put turkey, you could put a layer of shrimp a layer of peas, and then a layer of gravy on the bottom. It's delicious. But you, have you stayed for the sexy food eating competition? I have seen the pictures? And I'm curious as to, like, what you think is, like, an actual sexy food. Um, the food isn't sexy. The bodies are. Okay. But if you were to eat a food that you thought, this is a sexy food, like, say we were going to film a commercial. A clair. An eclair. Right, because it's chocolate on top. There's cream in the middle. Uh -huh. There's a lot to work with. Is that the kind of donut you get at a donut shop? No, I get um, 
what is the thing? A bear claw or like an apple fritter? Oh, baby. See, apple fritter is the number one. That's it the is. elite. When it's got the the chunks of apple in it. Because what if you get it and it's too puffy? I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't want it to be light and airy. No. It I need to it be to dense. be dense. See, there this is, is what I'm talking we get about. It. This is and a bear claw works. is lovely. A bear claw is nice. Anything sort of apple-y, cinnamony, I'm down for. Well, are you into maple donuts? Because I, I I love a maple bar. I can't really get behind the maple flavor. Like, no. It's not... What about a raised donut or a cake donut? So raised like, donut. I don't like cake donuts. See, I'm not dense. that much into them either. Unless it's the um, apple cider donuts. Or what are those called? Apple cider donuts? What are those called? I want you get that. them when you go... Um, Apple picking, and then they have the donuts. You know when you go apple picking? Me and my friends used to do that. We would go apple picking and pumpkin patch picking. And eventually we were like, why are we on the train for an hour and a half to go pay to do something that we could just buy at a store? True. It's the experience, right? You don't want that experience that bad? At that point, I was like, put the alcohol in me. Let's let's experience that. You know what I mean? Are you going to wear this outfit at Fat Slut or not? I don't think. So Why? I don't. It's truly choking me. Right. So I think I'll just wear it here and then maybe hang it up on the wall somewhere. And that's an actual, like, rod back there. That Yeah, that might have to come home with me. I was just kind of using whatever I had in my house. And so this really did come out of my living room. You really are choking to death. I can see it. I, it's, it's slowly <laughs> rising. You're such an artist. I am, but I love that I'm, like, blending in. Right. Let's take a break. We are back with Meatball. You are also the co-host of Sloppy. Sloppy Seconds with yeah. Big Dipper and Meatball. Yeah, and you've been doing this for what? How many episodes? Tons of episodes. We come out twice a week, which is wild. Mm -hmm. um, and it's even crazier that people like listen to it religiously. Do you get this? You'll be out with your friends. You'll be out with people. You start to tell a story, and they go, oh, no, baby, I already heard. I listened to the pod. Yes. And you're like, well, uh, don't then. Yeah. Because that's all I got, babes. Yeah. This is my life. Yeah. So that happened to me last night. I was hanging out with someone telling them, they were like, no, 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 I'm a mom plus. I already heard all of this. Dude. I heard it today. So they need new content so from I need, you. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, well, let me experience things then. Leave right. me alone. Right. What am I supposed to do? Anyway, the podcast has been so fun. We've been doing live shows. Uh, we did one anyway. in New York that truly was so fun. You just did a live show, too. Yeah. In San Diego. In San Isn't Diego. it, like, just a different vibe? It's way different. And also, because I was by myself and I had never done it by myself, um, I couldn't judge how long segments were going. And I told my <laughs> – and I thought – I really thought – that I was just old school and didn't know how to use my phone. So I was asking the girls in the back, can you set like multiple timers? So can I like <laughs> preset like a 12 minute, a 20 minute? And they were like, no, baby, you have to set it every time. What? How does the iPhone not just save a bunch of timers? I don't know, but that pisses me off all the time, especially when I'm trying to cook two things. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You ever cook two things at once? I eat more than I cook. Mm, slay. Yeah. Same. I bet you cook more than you eat. No. No? No. I just tried to meal prep something the other day, uh -huh. and I ate the whole thing. And I had gas for the whole day. What the What gives you gas? Baby, everything. Really? I'm also drinking a lot of protein shakes right now, and oh. that is just ruining my life. Right. And I don't know if they're going to smell or not. Sometimes it's odorless. Sometimes death. Death. I feel a lot of achievement when there's like a, 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 a when you pass gas and it's like a bellowing, when it's like, like that. I want it to be like, I feel like that's Germanic in a way. Like, <laughs> like really it's, a brutalist fart. Yeah, like it's like a barrel and it's like, it's well, like. Well, we hold more space. We're right, big girls. Right, right. And so I feel like, especially if you can feel yourself like wobble a bit, like you feel your stomach move. You know what I mean? But see, now, ever since you told your story about soup plantation, I feel like you should be a little weary about letting out a big old. No, I know. I know what's going to happen and when it's going to happen. I, I'm a, I'm a fart whisperer. <laughs> I know. You're the oracle of farts. I know. This is something I realized recently. We like to eat at Lucille's Barbecue, and I usually go like once a week, right? Well, you've been really telling them off lately on the Instagram story, so what's I going have. on? Why would you go back? Well, I learned something that I think there's something in the iced tea there that causes me to shit as soon as I'm done eating. Because when we leave, we always want to go to the, to the Ross and we always say we're going to walk it off. Mm -hmm. As soon as we pull up to the Ross, which is in the same shopping center, we're just moving the car, I always go, 
please turn around. We have to go back to Lucille's because I know I can like get to the bathroom really quickly. And it's every time I eat there. If we eat at Olive Garden, not a problem. Cheesecake Factory, not a problem. The mom and pop, not a problem. Every time we go to Lucille's, there will be an accident. But maybe, I mean, let me put my little investigator hat on. Okay. Maybe it could be possibly the Ross because there has been in TikToks and Instagram saying like the minute you walk into a Home Goods or a Ross, your body says release. That could be. It could be that your brain is like, oh, or maybe you feel so at home at Ross. It's like that thing, like the closer to home you get, the more you have to pee. How do you get your glitter to be so perfect? Wait, I look I'm at the not shape. done talking about your bowel movements. I know, but I keep staring at your makeup. Your makeup application is so perfect every fucking time. I don't agree. We might have two you. different approaches. Like I have like a tiny bit of makeup on right now. Well, it's compared to what you have on. I want to do that. I've tried. I, I be almost like that. did that today, and I was like, you know, you're gonna look so stupid because you don't know what you're doing. See, I it's have like no control. It's like the time control. I tried to do Alaska's makeup, and it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger to the point where Alaska goes. Are you me? Yeah. <laughs> how do you know how to make it like that? It's all I know. Okay. It's like I started just putting on too much. The glitter, it's it's always hit or miss. If you watch the podcast, like you can like skip through and you can kind of see days where I was definitely rushed because like one side of it will be so tall and the other side will be like angular. I don't know. You know, I've kind of given up on trying to look pretty. I think you're beautiful, and I think you know that. Well, I don't think that, and Willem calls me Shrek. Lady Shrek. Fiona Shrek. Willem calls you that? Yeah, but I feel it. I feel that. I think there's glamour in it. How do you do that? Because I was tr I was looking at pictures of you. Is that just your um, your highlight up into the eye? And then how do you get that line so clean? Well, people call it my nose tree. People online say, oh, look, you have your nose tree on because my contour in my nose goes like up in yeah and so but that's how like, it's supposed to do that's what that's i what thought this is. that's what you have too but no they they call it out and they say oh sure she goes with the nose tree again or like sometimes like right now these are obviously my eyebrows but sometimes i'll block my brows mm. out i would say 70 percent of the time that i do the show i block my brows out the rest of the time i'll use my own like if i have glasses I'm going to use my own because no one's going to be able to see the difference. But when I do that, people get like real judgy and they're like, oh, my God, that same stamped brow. And I'm like, well, this is my brow. Like people used to complain because I wear the same I, blue eyeshadow, same color blue glitter beautiful. every single time. I don't feel a need. I'm not like I'm not trying to be like a fashion makeup girly. Right. I'm trying to like get the makeup on so that I could go out there and be an asshole. Right. That's the goal. My makeup palette with the most colors in it that I use is the makeup palette that you released. Oh, yeah. And you, get, well, uh, yes. you gifted me. And honestly, I mean, it has everything that I needed in it. But it doesn't have, and I really fought for it, it doesn't have a black or a brown. And I was like, we don't need... To, like, the orange and the red are so similar. We could get away with just yeah. taking one of those out. But the white I loved, mm -hmm. called that one Shrinkle, because my favorite white is the Sugar Pill Taco. Uh-huh. Have you ever used that? I haven't. Oh, you got to get in it. Yeah. I'll bring you one. I remember um, Grandma's Pickles. Grandma's Pickles. Uh-huh. Uh, Comfort Plus. <laughs> Comfort Plus, because we like to fly. Recently, I got onto a flight, and the person handed me a seatbelt extender. And Not you were offended. Oh, I was pissed. I said, I've lost 40 pounds. Yeah. Well, they've never done that before. I think they were trying to be nice, trying to like kind of behind, like slip it over to me. And I, um, I stole it and it's in my drag room. Hang on to that. We might travel together sometime and mm. I might have to sneak that from you. I would love to travel with you. I would love that. I, You know, when I travel, I'm, I don't know if you're the same way, but I have no budget in the airport. Oh, yeah. It doesn't exist. Zero. That money is... Invisible it's money. Funny money. It's funny money. It's funny money. It's monopoly money. <laughs> it's monopoly money. I one time was trapped in an airport and like my flight got delayed. So I went and ate a hamburger at one place and then I um, was still hungry. So I went to another place and ate another hamburger. Yeah. That was about an $80 experience. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Doesn't matter. What are you going to go for in an airport? Is it normally going to be a hamburger if you've got a layover? If there's a layover, I'll do – generally, if I'm going to stop and eat somewhere, I'll do a chicken Caesar salad because they all taste the same no matter where you sure. go. But for some reason, I think it was the Austin airport. And if you've ever been in that airport, they have, like, barbecue places and, like, real the restaurants. Lake. The Salt Lake. And yes! They got that. And they got the ribs. And you know what they used to have that they got rid of, I think, is they used to have a vinegar-based coleslaw. 
And then the last time I was there, it was like a creamy regular, which was just fine. Mm -hmm. But I looked forward to that particular coleslaw and it was gone. What's your favorite airport? I do like the Austin airport just because of the things. But I recently um, fell in love with the renovations at the Salt Lake airport. Um, The bathrooms are fantastic. They're gorgeous. There's plenty of room. Nobody's looking around. Mm. Nobody. You know what I hate is when you get off the plane and you're like, oh, I've got to go pee. And because I always where's the Ross? Where's the Ross? (laughs) I've got to shit my pants. Where's the seals? Um, When you get off the plane, I never go to that first bathroom. Mm -mm. I always wait to get down to baggage claim because everyone's focused on their bags. Mm -hmm. I can sneak back, go to the bathroom. But I hate when you get in there and it's just like that line. And it's like, why in one of those first bathrooms by the terminals, why is there like one or two urinals and then like one stall? That doesn't make any sense. You need more. You need way more, especially in the terminal. If I really got to go because I can't go in public, I wait in line for the family restroom. Uh, that's that's smart. Why do you think um, a lot of times there's a there's a place I work at pretty frequently in Southern California? Name them. Uh, see, I want to. Name them. I want to, but I just can't. Okay. And Name them. When I go into the stall. Hmm. It doesn't smell like shit. It smells gamey. (laughs) It smells like, I don't know what it is, but it just smells like a wet dog. Is it a family restroom, a a, a women or genderless? It's generally the quote unquote men's restroom Hmm. and the the quote women's. The women's is messier, but it doesn't stink as bad. Is it precinct? No, 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 no. I've never used the restroom there because I thought that's where the eating contest took place. (laughs) Ah! It's where they clean up. No, um, I don't get that. I, I sometimes things really do stink for me, and I don't love that. I don't like that. I have a very sensitive nose, mm-hmm. so when people, I'm gonna say something. When drag queens don't wash their costumes, right. I do not stick around with them. You can't feature that. I can't talk to them because it's all I can do is think of like the the smell. Mm-hmm. Uh oh, what's flying in? Oh no. Oh, I've been waiting. Subway. Subway has introduced some new items. They came out in January, but we were waiting. Let's see if we got, I don't think we got everything. Oh, okay. We got, they had three new foot long items. (laughs) Oh, that gave me the shivers. (laughs) A foot long churro. Oh, the footlong cookie? A footlong pretzel. And it looks like they may not have had the fucking footlong cookie, so they sent a six-pack. Of cookies? Let's see. I don't know. The footlong churro I've been seeing all over TikTok. Oh, come on. Oh, they are fresh, though. Oh. Yeah, they are fresh. Oh, the box. This is a footlong... No, can I say something to Subway? Say anything I love you, you, Subway. But I remember when a Sub... And I haven't eaten at Subway in forever, but I was at an airport recently, and it was the only thing that looked like food. Um, I remember a foot long used to be six dollars. Yeah, seven dollars. Now it's eleven dollars, twelve dollars. It's doubled in price. It it's is. not even real bread. Legally, they can't call it bread. They can't. Why? Because it's more plastic. Oh, look it up. I haven't done the research. So there's less calories. I could have made plastic. that up. You know, basically, I'm losing blood flow because I'm being choked out. I could be lying. Right, yeah, right. girl. Now they knew they were wrong for this. I want you to open that. They knew they were very wrong for that churro for $5. No, it wasn't $5. I lie. Ma'am, this isn't... It was only two forty nine. I want you to taste it to tell me if it really does taste like cinnamon. Because that's the key, I think, is the cinnamon and sugar. Yeah, that's what makes a churro a churro. Right. Have you ever bought a churro off a, an, a, in a subway station from a, a cart? No. Oh, go. Yeah? Oh. I'm have better at Disneyland. Oh God, mm. it's not crunchy enough on the outside or soft enough on the inside. I want to say that this item, the churro from Subway, the footlong churro. Let me say this: <laughs> the footlong churro from Subway tastes no more than its. $2.49 price tag. I don't think it tastes less than that, but I don't think it tastes more than that. Um, I would pay two fifty dollars for that and be disappointed every time, probably. It needs to not taste like the plastic it's made out of. It's put like a weird film on the back of my mouth. Okay, this is the footlong pretzel. 
I love a pretzel. See, I do Anytime too. I see a pretzel on a menu, I'm getting it. But you know what's real and funny to me? And cheese sauce. There's no sauce. Was Where's there the an option sauce? for sauce? A paid sauce? It doesn't say. It just says. Oh, I selected honey they didn't put it on the receipt. I don't want this part because there's no salt. But there is some sort of water on it or something. Would you like to have that? You can have as much as you, or as little as you want. Your nails are so pretty. They're <laughs> they're unfinished. Are they? I like yeah, your, look, the I ring fingers pretty. On that hand. It fell off, Delta. Oh, thank you I for thought, pointing that out. No, for I everyone. just thought maybe you were sick or something. <laughs> you know, it was one of those days where the glue would not stick to my finger. I did the alcohol wipe, I did everything, and it just wouldn't stick. You just have to get a simple mani. Just a simple. Is that your real nail? Well, no, these are just like stick ons. Like Kelly Mantle or Bianca Del Rio. Oh, they just, this is not a Broadway thing where like they just put a stripe down your nail, and if mm. you move your hands, it, yeah, why not? I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It looks finished. Okay, what do you, this needs a dipping sauce. I can tell I by looking at you. You're going to die. That's I can tell. Because you're already choking anyway. And then that on top of it. <laughs> oh, God. It's like stale. I'm just not going to eat that. Put it on here. You don't have to cover it. You don't have to cover it. Oh, we We're need friends. them to know. We're friends. You can I'm see my incisor and my molar bite right here. Mm -hmm. If someone wanted to clone me, this would be perfect because it's so dry. I have no teeth, so I just swallow the whatever I put in there. What do you say this needs? What would you say this it was- It needs a dipping sauce and it needs to be fresh. It needs to come as like a frozen dough and then they bake it in store like they do their bread because the bread yeah. at least is like warm and inviting and this is just stale. Yeah, I think it was very stale and I don't think it, I don't think it was $3.79 without a dipping sauce. Three seventy nine for that. If it had a dipping sauce, I give it a little more 150. credit. One fifty. One fifty. One uh, fifty. Less than the churro. Oh yeah, way less, less than, than the churro, churro for sure. Now, the churro at least has a little texture. Oh, I forgot we're doing the cookies. Well, now, those cookies are two hundred and ten calories a cookie. Mm-hmm. How many calories can you have at a meal? As much as I want, I guess. These have ten grams of fat, thirty grams of carbohydrate, one gram of fiber. 18 grams of sugar, oh, they 18 got grams of fiber. added sugar. 18 grams of added sugar? Mm -hmm. Mama, we gonna die today. Mm -hmm. I can't feel my toes. You know diabetes? Mm. You know the diabetes neck? I do know about the diabetes neck. Because when Jabba the Hutt was over here sitting up. <laughs> oh my God. That's all y'all were talking about. She's talking about you, Miha. <laughs> Miha. So we could not get the foot long cookie. Click your heels so you can fucking go home. <laughs> No, I'm Mirage. Um, that means nothing to you. You don't watch that show. What show? Exactly. What are these Tell cookies? me the show. Drag Race. No, I, I saw the first episode, and then it was like, now you have to download whatever. And I'm like, I'm not downloading anything else ever fucking again. Like, <laughs> ever again. Stop moving networks. Stop. Stop. Who is going to end up bundling everything one day? Just charge me. Let's just call that cable and we'll yeah. go back to regular back cable. To what we did. Because I think that might be cheaper now. Because I had to like, I'm making all these new accounts. I'm downloading all this new stuff on my TV. And I was like, what is the point? I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it either. <clears throat> we couldn't get the footlong cookie. I think that's only available in certain markets. So we got six cookies. These are all chocolate chip. Not even a variety. They but. feel warm. You know, is do you like a chocolate chip cookie normally? I do, I do, I do. Uh huh. I do. Not bad. Mm hmm. I mean, they were warm. Uh huh. What do you think of the vanilla in that? Is there enough? Now, why does it have an almost taste of cardboard or or wood shavings? You know, when you're cutting they don't do wood, plastic in these ones. No, this is wood. Right. So these are biodegradable. But you know, when you're cutting cutting pine at the Home Depot mm -hmm. and they sh and you can smell it. That's what's that's in there. what this tastes like. When you go to Subway, if you were to get a cookie, what would be your first choice? Would it be? I wouldn't be getting cookies at Subway. I don't eat at Subway. Oh, you don't eat at Subway. No, only if it's truly the last option. Really? I do not like the smell of it. Really? I'm going to blow your mind here. I'm a little bougie when it comes to foodsies. Uh -huh. Well, you can be. You run the most successful eating contest in the world. Well, no, those foods I buy at Walmart. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I don't often eat fast food. And if I do, it's like a McDonald's breakfast sandwich. Mm -hmm. Because Which I one? know that it's a fresh cracked egg. I get the bacon, egg, and cheese McMuffin. Okay. Is that not yours? No, I like to have the um, the two 
sausage McMuffins with egg, but then I don't eat the hash brown because the hash browns are fucked up now. You have to tell them fry it hard. Oh, fry it hard. That's what I said. That say. was really what you I say? literally say, can you fry the hash brown hard? Can you fry it hard? Yeah, baby. You've never heard fry hard? No, but I, have you heard of a hot Sprite? Why is it spicy? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a break. Action. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Why why did you do this to me? I thought you wanted me here. I do, but I knew it would be off the rails and I wouldn't want to do my work. I would want to just sit here and laugh with you. Do I'm supposed work. to do my work and I'm supposed to be like, and we're back. Welcome to today we have with us. <laughs> but like, I don't want to do that. I want to watch you play with Barbies on your boobs. And a sofa. And a sofa. I, um, the more I'm looking at this costume in camera, I really wish I would have just worn a normal dress, huh? No. No. I wish I would have just, I wish I would have just worn a normal dress because I'm choking. <laughs> I know, but I like watching you choke. You're not going to die. And we are back talking about wild hookups and hanging uh, hanging from curtains. Do you say do you think those are curtains or drapes? Cur- what's the difference? I think they dra- the drape like drapes. I think these oh, are drapes. Oh, cuz the curtain is like you close it in front of the window but the drape is like the decor on the side. I think I would believe that. Yes. I mean that sounds like we know what we're talking about. Cuz the drape is yes. Yeah. Fancier. I like it. This is the part of the podcast uh, that we call Read Me Delta. Read Me Delta! People send in their letters. They ask questions. Sometimes they say inappropriate things. I think it's fine. Yeah, I like the other episode, uh, an episode I was watching where you got a bill. Someone just sent you a bill. Someone sent me a bill. Have you ever been tipped with a receipt somewhere? No. I get that at brunch sometimes, and I could not feel more disgusting about myself when someone will tip me like this, and I'm not looking, and then when I go to the back and I set my money down, I'm like, that's a receipt. Like, that's a receipt from, like, Food Lion or something. Someone gave me a, a American Express, like, gift card. Uh-huh. So I went to go check how much money was left on it because it said $100. I had 250 on it. Two dollars and fifty cents. Oh, could have well, gotten a, a, a churro. You could have gotten a churro if it was at the right place. Um, if you would like to send a letter, you can send it to readmedelta at gmail.com. Um, look at this. This is fancy as hell. You open it with a knife? A letter opener. You know that. You know how we do. You know how you do. Okay. Dear Very Delta and Very Meatball. My partner and I disagree on the correct way to eat an Oreo. I prefer to eat them in one bite, especially when dunking them so that no crumbs are scattered across the floor, table, no crumbs. chaise lounge, or any nearby surface. My partner prefers to eat them in several bites, resulting in crumbs flying across the room in a dramatic fashion. Am I wrong for consuming an Oreo in one bite like a piggy pig pig? Should I sacrifice cleanliness for a more paced, indulgent experience? What is the most very Delta way to eat an Oreo? Sincerely, very Lee. I thought the correct way to eat an Oreo was you split it in half and then you like use your teeth to gr- right. grind off the icing and then you just eat the cookies individually. That's what I think. And is. I think that's less messy and you get yeah. more uh, individual flavor. Yeah, that's the what flavor. I think. Do you like Oreos? I do. Do you, well, have, yeah. a, do you have like a specialty flavor of Oreo that you like? I think just the plain ones are fine. I think the double stuffed ones, it's a little indulgent. That's like a little too much. Oh, too much? Well, the double stuffs are good if you're like super into the icing flavor. But sometimes I think that like they kind of perfected it with the first one. Mm -hmm. It's the right balance of icing to cookie. I like the golden Oreos, which are like. Oh, the vanilla flavor. Yeah, I love those. And what's is the icing any different flavor? Same. What's your go-to cookie at the grocery store? Okay. To the, to, well, I often don't, I don't really like sweets at all. Like, I don't eat cookies that often. But if I were to, it would be the um, Keebler Elves make a copy of the Girl Scout cookies. Okay. So it's the little Samoa cookie. It's the coconut, chocolate, caramel. Uh-huh. They make a really good dupe. And so I'll always get that. They're very But it good. is Girl Scout season, I think, when this episode comes out. So go and buy from a local little child. Yeah. Huh. Have you seen when they set up outside of Weight Watchers? <laughs> I'm mad. Yeah, kimchi buys them out. Damn. Because she's a Weight Watcher girl. Um, it's not a joke. Wait a minute. Wait, is there no more 
questions? No, there is, but I want to go back. The items were supposed to be Auntie Anne's footlong pretzel. That's what we ate from Subway. That was they. That was they, Auntie Anne. They Anne's? were representing Auntie Anne. Oh, Wait, Auntie Anne better sue. You want one better? They were representing a Cinnabon foot long churro. Baby, I know Maybe Cinnabon. Not. I know Cinnabon better no, no, than no. any. There are no way in hell you were fucking serious about that. And I take this very personally. First of all, I love Auntie Anne's foot long pretzels. But those are, like we we're saying, those are made fresh. You watch the person fucking twist it, bop it, lay it How down. How would you like team up with somebody and then do such a disservice to their brand? Listen, that it's Cinnabon. Subway. That's Cinnabon? Girl, you know Cinnabon. Even the most basic thing at Cinnabon would never taste like that. It would be soft, warm, and very buttery. Baby, I love Oh, Cinnabon. God. You make me want to go to a mall. That's a sexy food. So get Cinnabon and put me in the contest. Watch I will. Fuck it up. I will put it inside my rectum, <laughs> and I will push it out like a slushy. Can you imagine how delicious that would be? Well, for, I feel like if we want to see that, we'll just take you to a soup plantation. I mean... Or no, Lucille's. 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 She gets you right. How What's your favorite? It? Do you like the ribs there? I should okay. I go. There's not one near here, is there? The ribs are good, but I like my ribs. I like my bones dry, and then I like to put my own sauce on. Yes, absolutely. Right? Oh, I hate when a place puts yeah. the barbecue sauce on top, and I'm like, no, 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 no. I think they default with that, but they got rid of their um, their brisket burnt ends, which were my favorite. <gasps> I love a burnt end. So do I. And I like to ask for extra burnt, extra well, so they're crispy like beef Fried turkey. hard. Their pulled pork is delicious, but I love their Texas Red Hots, which are like soup. Their hot link is so spicy to me Ooh. that I sweat. I'm like okay. this. And I like to have country fair corn pudding from there. Which is, is this all one order? Well, I don't get all of that. I just uh. These are like the things I'll alternate. So I'll usually do the two meat combo at lunch, which comes with one side. But dinner comes with two sides and more of a protein portion, whatever you get. Okay. Um, but I think the lunch portion is perfect. I really do. Yes. I like a blood sows barbecue. Oh, tell but me. It's, a little, it's very good. Falls off the bone. But when I do order it for delivery, it's always like, it's my mouth is watering. It becomes like $120 because I just want it all. Yeah, I yeah, want yeah. it all. And I do that and then I'll throw some of it away. Like, what will you get, though? Oh, I get the ribs, I get the burnt ends, I get a brisket, and I get uh, the sausage, like, sliced. And then I'll get their mac and cheese, which is never really that good, but I, you always have to order it, mm -hmm. and then you throw it away. And then I get the cornbread. You know what's funny to me is how many people are like, oh, the mac and cheese at such and such is so good. Nobody's mac and cheese is good. Like, nobody, nobody's. Nobody's. Never is. had a good Stop one. Stop saying, like, oh, it's not bad. Like, people will be like, oh, Popeyes is not bad. No, it tastes oh, exactly it's as everybody. And, you know, Popeyes is pulling a game in Las Vegas. Speaking about Las Vegas again, they, they called their store in the in the hotel we were staying at, they called it Louisiana Kitchen. So oh. I saw a sign for Louisiana Kitchen. I thought, oh, I love, I'm from Louisiana. I love Louisiana uh, Cajun food. Yeah. That's for me. Yeah. I look inside, Popeyes. Stop it. I got the dirty rice. They're probably teamed up with Cinnabon with a, they're going to have a Cinnabon chicken. Cinnabon <laughs> chicken. Auntie Anne's etouffee. <laughs> All right. Hi, Delta Work and sexy guest star. Womp womp. I'm JC from San Francisco. First, I want to thank you for making my life better. Every week, you've always inspired me, and I admire your dedication to drag and self-love. I'm a gay Latino man, and I've kept a secret for years. I want to do drag so bad. I have had a $300 wig sitting in the closet for the last three years, but I just don't have the balls or the courage to do something with it. I'm a 45-year-old man who is not living his best self because I want to transform into the woman fantasy, but I'm so scared. What can I do? Please help me, Delta. All my love, JC. I mean, do it. You do it. You have. It is your it. right of passage to get in drag. I mean, as, and you identify as a gay Latino male. I'm telling you right now, if you especially, I mean, anybody can do drag. Drag is for everybody. It's for everybody. But if you have had that wig, I have my. I well, have a no, lot of, it's not for everybody. But it's not for everybody. A lot, of, a lot of people. But I have a lot of confidence in you because you knew enough to know I want a really great wig. And that is, as long as you start somewhere, maybe you have a really great outfit. Maybe you bought one of Meatballs' outfits, and you're like, I I want to wear that someday. That's the basis right there. You know what you want. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just the you already have the desire. Go for it. Also, you're in San Francisco. So here's the thing. Do it. Throw it on. Go to a princess at the Oasis, hosted by T Tito Soto. Yep. Um, super inviting. A crowd, audience, all the drag queens there are super supportive of each other. Um, 
get like just do it yeah have, have a friend to. drive you there though you don't want to be in an uber mm-hmm. in your first time in drag that's no. going to be very uncomfortable and jarring you need some you need comfort the whole way through have a couple drinks at home if you drink or do whatever you want to relax maybe order some barbecue and eat it get into drag and then head out yeah. make it a whole thing yeah maybe if you are too scared to go out at first um could you maybe get fully in drag at home and give yourself like a photo shoot like maybe you could set up your camera and a yeah. timer and say like i want to i want to just see what i look like and how i feel in it and then you know Meatball will attest to this. Meatball is a pro in any shoe, but if you are not a pro in any shoe, be careful in what you go out in for the very first time. Oh, because yeah. I'm going to tell you, and I'm not trying to like uh, make you feel scared, just make you feel informed. Maybe sometimes you might have to go running. You just have no you idea don't know. what's going to happen. A man in a red truck might turn on you. He might. I mean, but wear get a high heel croc for your first time out. You do a high I heel mean, croc. I know you hate a croc, but they're very in right yeah. now. Just be comfortable and have a good time. Yeah. And you're right. Do a photo shoot at home first. That's how I started. Yeah, why not? I First time, me and my friends, I had a bunch of my friends come over. I, they helped me put the makeup on. We made it a, an evening. We were drinking. We took a bunch of photos together. And then the next time I went out, I went to Exposure Drag in yeah. Highland Park. And it was the same situation. I was very nervous. But once I got there, all the queens were, like, excited that there was, like, a new drag person around. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I think um, not just the photo shoot, maybe you go live on Instagram and you tell your friends like, hey, I'm yeah. going to be going live in drag. Like make a little announcement. Let people know like that, you know, she's coming. She's tonight. She comes. I know tonight she comes. Well, no, what is that? Song by the cars. You're too young. I'm so young. I know tonight she comes. Oh, she's going to come. I've been coming a lot lately. Girl, we ate today. We gave advice today. You ever we... take pills to make you come more? No. Do you do that? I did, and it's wild what really? happened. Yeah. Like a fountain? Well, yeah. Well, yes. No, it's just a lot more than before. Yeah. Yeah. I like to say heavy comer. Heavy comer. Yeah. I like my cum heavy. Do you say like, Do you, you can be like, um, oh, I was sheeting cum. Sheeting? Right? That sounds like a lot. I like when someone says, I'm shooting ropes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Shooting ropes. Do you probate? No, I don't uh, do that. Do you probate? I love a good probate. Yeah, probate lawyer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have a lawyer on retainer? Not on retainer, but I I used to because I had uh, gotten in a car accident that was pretty bad. Is that how you lost the nail? (laughs) Yeah, it was on my way here. (laughs) I will tell you the other night, I wasn't even drunk, and I was driving, and (laughs) never mind. I mean, I think I basically drove my car up over a curb because I had it on auto drive, but it didn't register the curb because it was raining. Oh. So it like went, dun, 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 and I was like, ah! Are, are you like like Knight Rider, like Kit from Knight Rider? Is that what you have? Uh, Kind of, yeah. Well, I just let it drive me home sometimes because I want to like text and uh, be on Instagram. What kind of car is that? I'm not going to tell you what kind of car I drive. Like an electronic car. Yeah. Oh. What did you think I meant? I don't know. I couldn't figure it out. I thought I thought there was only one kind of electronic car. No, there's multiple now. Oh, shit. You should get one. No, why not? I wouldn't be any good with that. Because you could then you could save yourself like a good hour and do your makeup while you're driving in. I actually that would be sickening. Yeah, expensive. No, uh, well, you're rich. It's not fine. really. I'm not rich. Not anymore. You're a rich bitch. You're a rich bitch. No, you know what? You are a rich bitch because um, your successful party. And I'm not going back to this to kiss your ass, but it should be noted. It. it should be fucking noted that it is. Probably one of the handful, and I mean handful, of gigs in Southern California that not only treats the entertainers, every entertainer like a star, but compensates and facilitates so amazingly Thank that it you. makes people feel like, fuck, I real this is like an out of town gig, like, but it's in town. And so you leave like, wow, like I feel so valued. I feel so like energized. So when people go, it's like Everyone feels that way. Well, I, 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 when I started it, I, I mean, when I started drag, I was doing gigs for $50. When I was driving all over the town, I was driving an hour and a half out of town for $50. And I was like, that's just not fair. Like, I want my party to be, I want the people that are in the show to feel compensated enough that they want to do bigger numbers. Right. Or like, and like, we'll take an Uber home so that they're not driving drunk. And I want them to feel like appreciated. So if it's, if I'm not making as much money, for, but everyone else is, I'm fine with that. 
That's wild. I want the divas to have their money. Well, they do. And they feel good. great. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> That's me choking. Why is it spicy? You are. <laughs> Um, everyone can follow you at Spiciest Meatball on all all social media platforms. No, no, it's Spiciest Meatball on Instagram, and then it's me- a Fat Drag Meatball on Twitter, and then it's Meatball the Drag Queen on TikTok. And then Explain what is that. it on Venmo? Spiciest Meatball on Venmo. Send me that Venmo money so I can yeah. keep paying these divas more money. Honey coins, coins. Yeah, and send me money for this outfit that I made because I had to buy I had to buy all these things. All of them. Well, I, well, I, I can't believe the couch. Really, the couch sends me. That was my favorite part, too. I love it. It's on my right titty. <laughs> Thank you one. so much for listening to and Which watching Gary Del- Um, The one on the back. I won't let it end. Yeah, the ones I'm back here. Much fun. I'm never going to let this episode in. Oh, your back titty? Yeah. Both no, of them. What? How do you hide that in a bra? Um, uh, well, I buy a bra. Like, the back of my bra is about that big, mm. right? And I buy the back smoothing balconette. From Lane Bryant, Kasik. Back smoothing balconette is what you're really looking for. So it gives you the most coverage in the back. But then I also have my special trick back here, which I can't show everyone because it's not been patented yet. Okay. You know what it is. Yes. Um, Ace bandage and duct tape. Yeah. Land Insider taught me how to get my my tits together. Have you ever watched them tape down? It's insane. I have. I I have. Like, That's got to hurt. Well, I remember saying to Landon one time, I'm like, how come every time I wear something low cut, like my tits, like the, my nipples always show, my nipple always show, and, the, and like it just doesn't work. And La- it took Landon to say to me, because of the trajectory of how you push your bust up, that is not how clothing is made for the people that are normally wearing it. They're normally wearing it for like a teardrop breast mm. that is just lightly supported. But, we're, but you're pushing we're everything pushing up to maximize what you have. And so your nipples are coming out. It really takes a village. It takes it a really village. Takes Land Insider. It takes Land, Land Insider. Insider. Truly, if you ever have anything, they have the answer. They have the answer. Um, thank you so much for listening to and watching Very Delta. Our show comes out every Monday. Subscribe to Mom Podcast YouTube channel and turn on the notifications so you don't miss an episode. And search for Very Delta on your favorite podcast apps to listen to the audio-only version if you just can't take all of this beauty. Hello. It's so spicy. <laughs> I fucking hate her. <laughs> You can also sign up for our premium offerings on Mom Plus Gold by visiting mompodcast.plus where you get weekly episodes of more Very Delta. And don't forget to send all of your questions to readmedelta at gmail.com and you can follow me on Instagram at Delta Work. Until next week, keep things Very Delta. Raw's Law. To listen to Very Delta ad-free, a day early, and to get access to more Very Delta, sign up for Mom Plus Gold at mompodcast.plus. Very Delta is produced by Moguls of Media, a.k.a. Mom. Hosted by Delta Work. Production supervision and engineering by Margot Padilla. Editing and post-production by Doug Robertson. With original theme music by Will Pitts. Executive produced by Willem, Alaska, Big Dipper, Camille Stennis, and Joe Cilio. The realness, mom. Mom.